I recently got a request to show how I study an entire chapter of the Bible. I also got requests to do James 1, like multiple requests. So we're going to combine both of those ideas together. So the first step in studying an entire chapter of the Bible is, of course, read. Read the entire chapter. I've already gone ahead and read James chapter 1. If you haven't done that yet, well, obviously, maybe you haven't done it yet. <laughs> you just clicked on this video. Pause the video. Read the entire chapter of James, James 1 and then come back and we'll keep going. So after I read James chapter one, or you know, a lot of times even before, we're just lucky that James gives us this information. I like to figure out who the author is and who the audience is. He wrote to the 12 tribes throughout the world, but his audience is truly for the Church of Christ. So this can be applied to us today. And while reading through the text, it's important to keep in mind cultural, um, I just lost my train of thought, but when reading through, keep in mind that the culture was different and you know, it, it's important to also have a concordance open. I like to use enduring word, but there's so many online concordances available um, just to make sure that I'm reading the word and interpreting it accurately. So then after reading it, I got the author, I got the audience, then I just like to take notes, just like I would in school almost. And I like to use my trusty zebra mild liners because they're colorful and it's fun. <laughs> and although I don't study entire chapters often, I mean, I do for my Study the Whole Bible With Me series, but I like to pick apart verses verse by verse. This is an overall, this is a good way to get an overall idea of what the chapter is talking about. And so the title in my Bible, and I'm reading out of the NIV, I am using the um, version Bible app on my phone. And the title it says is Trials and Temptations. Another way that I do this is using my journaling Bible. Because with a journaling Bible, let me grab mine, it's right here. You have the text and then you have an area to write. So it's really helpful. If you have a journaling Bible, this is one way to do it. But if you don't, that's okay. You can just do it in a regular notebook as well. And just reading the first or verse two, consider it joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. And I've done this verse so much on my channel. Um, but if you go down to verse four, it's talking about perseverance. So I just wrote, consider it joy when you face trials. Trials equals the testing of faith, which means perseverance. And perseverance allows us to be mature, spiritually mature. I know, you know, maturity, we talk about age sometimes, but you can be 40 years old and immature, you know? <laughs> so being mature spiritually and also you know, mentally is a subject to the individual. And then verses five through seven. So one thing that I like to do is chunk verses together. So verses two through four, I chunked that together and took notes on it because that was talking about the testing of faith. Verses five, through seven, I'm chunking those together, and that's talking about wisdom. And I just wrote, ask God, because he gives it generously. You know, no question, no request is too silly for God. Bring it to God. But when you ask, have faith. You know, don't go to God without faith. Ask God with faith boldly. Boldly approach God with faith. While I'm writing, a few things pop into my mind as well. I'm gonna backtrack a little bit because it did pop into my mind with this, but I forgot to say it. So I did a video on joy versus happiness, and that's important because consider it joy when you face trials. Joy 
is something that happens. Is a is it, joy is something that we have despite our circumstances. So you can be going through a really hard time and be unhappy, but still have joy. You can be happy and also have joy, but you can be unhappy because your situation is not the best and you can still have joy of the Lord. So consider it joy when you face trials. Um, and then also this, I think of when the man, I think it was in John 15, no, Mark nine. I think it was Mark nine. Oh, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe it was in Mark nine when the man brought his son to got to Jesus to have the demon. You know, there was a demon who possessed the man's son since birth. And let me look it up. <laughs> it was Mark, Mark chapter nine, verses 14 through 29. So there was a man who brought his son so that Jesus can get rid of the evil spirit that was possessing the boy. Um, and the man said, if you can, you know, have mercy in us and help us. And that was in Mark 9, 22. Jesus said in Mark 23, Mark 9, 23, if I can, anything is possible to the one who believes. And that's what I think of with this. It's not if God can do it, of course he can do it. So you need to have faith that he can do all things. Don't approach God with the doubt in your mind and doubt in your heart. Know that he can do it. But remember, this is this, you know, when, when we, this is talking about asking God for wisdom, right? And so sometimes we ask God for things that are not in the will of God. Um, it's important to seek his wisdom because when you're seeking the wisdom of God, you will also receive the guidance of God and you will receive, he will give you the desires of your heart, right? Um, not that, you know, for example, so how do I explain this? <laughs> if you have a desire, he will give you the actual desire of your heart, right? It's not that I want a Lamborghini and God will give me that Lamborghini because it's a desire of my heart, but rather God will give me the desire. I will desire the things that God wants me to desire because I am seeking his wisdom and I'm seeking his will. And when all those things line up, because it's the will of God, know that he will do it. Have faith, have that bold faith that he can and he will do it. So while I'm taking notes, while I'm chunking scriptures together, I'm thinking of all these other scriptures and I write those down and I add it up to my notes. And it doesn't have to be the most aesthetically pleasing. This is not aesthetically pleasing in any shape or form, but that doesn't matter. Now James 5, um, now James chapter 1 verses 9 through 11 Again, are a set of verses that I'm going to chunk together. But I mean, I think I know what they mean by reading it, but I want to triple check. So let's go to the enduring word. And I tried to read it for myself and think about it for myself before accessing the enduring word, um, just because I feel like, I don't know. I just tried to read it for myself first. I read through the enduring word and what they had written basically is what I thought it meant. Um, so in humble circumstances, so reading through those scriptures, I just gathered that things of this world don't matter because it will all fade away. We are not, no one's going to live on this earth permanently. Also why it's important to seek the wisdom of God, because if you're seeking the things of the Lord, then you're focused on doing God's work. And, you know, even in verse six, when it says that when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That just makes me think of someone who, you know, when the wind, you know, if the wind is blowing in one direction, so are you. If your circumstances are going in one direction, then that's the way that your feelings and your joys and your emotion and your faith will go. You know, you're being blown and tossed. You're not solid and rooted in Christ. So just remember that. And then verse 12, I feel like is very similar to this. Blessed are those who persevere. Verse 13 through 15. It's talking about temptation. God does not tempt. 
remember that. If you're in a situation where you are being tempted, just be careful because, and know that that is not God tempting you. There's a big difference between tempt and test. Test could be an uncomfortable situation. Tempt is directly related to sin. And when sin, when we give birth to sin, right? When we allow sin to, when we allow sin into our lives, um, it says that in verse 14, each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. And then it gives birth to sin. And when it's full grown, it gives birth to death. And it can be really tricky, you know, depending on the sin, of course. Sin can enter relationships. It can enter, you know, um, so many aspects of your life. So it's really important to avoid sin as much as possible so that it doesn't give birth to death. God is life, and so giving birth to death is the opposite of Jesus and have, and bringing, you know, good, producing good fruit. I think on the other hand, you know, verses 16 through 18, every good and perfect gift comes from above. So everything good comes from God. Ever been tempted to sin and then you don't? And then you get that feeling where, okay, yeah, I did this. This feels good to not, to avoid that sin. And I'm so grateful that God doesn't change, that he is always the same. Imagine if we had a God that was constantly changing, you know, his love for us or just changing in general, but he is always the same in a world where the people around us, for the most part, and even the world itself is always changing. Okay, so that was trials and temptations, and now we're gonna move on to listening and doing, is what my Bible says. This is vital, and this is something that I see a lot, and hey, you know, it's something that I do sometimes. Verse 19 through 21. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to, come ang slow to become angry. That's key. That's key. If anything that you get from this video, take this. <laughs> be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So humility brings about acceptance of God's truth, and humility means that we need to recognize that we are not always right. Verses 22 through 25, again. Don't just listen to the word and stay the same. Let the word impact your life. You can go to church for your entire life and still be doing the same things that the word is telling you not to do. Do you need some examples? I'll give you some examples. <laughs> Gossip, talking neg negatively, just negative talk in general, especially about other people. Of course, um, you know, lying, going to church and praying to God on one hand, but the other hand, hand talking to your friends and cussing up a storm. Sexual immorality. I mean, there's so much, you know, how can you listen to the word? And I'm talking to myself as well. How can you listen to the word and read all these things, but then not apply it to your life? You know, do you get that sense of conviction? If not, maybe spend some more time in the word. I don't know. <laughs> it says anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. That makes no sense, right? Um, but whoever looks intently, and I think that's the important part. You have to be intentional about practicing the word. Because this world will not let you just willfully and easily go about your life <laughs> walking in Christ. This world is just, it, it's really sad. It's just, it's getting worse and worse. 
And if you look intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongue deceive themselves. Again, that's what I was just talking about with not only swearing, but gossip, negative talk, you know, anything that comes out of your mouth. If you consider yourself religious and, you know, you can be religious and also not necessarily walking with Christ. Remember that being a Christian starts with, and it's not even just being a Christian, following Jesus starts with your heart and the way that you act, the things that come out of your mouth, the way that you think, the way that you see people, the way that you see yourself. And then verses 26 through 27, control what you say. I could do an entire video on that, and maybe I should. That's so important. And I used to be someone that didn't control what I said. I would just say the first thing that came to my mind, especially, where is it? I, when verse 19 through 21, I was not quick to listen, so to speak, so to get angry. And I wasn't in control of what I said. And thank God I'm not there anymore. Of course, we all slip up, but it's important to control what you say. You can't just say the first thing that comes to your mind, especially when you're feeling angry. It's better to just walk away, cool off, give it time. Um, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So two important factors here. The first one is to... Not only, I think, you know, the word is saying orphans and widows because look to those who are less fortunate and see how you can help them. Not necessarily financially, but even emotionally. Some people are going through some hard times. Just be a good friend even, less fortunate than you. And then two, Keep yourself from being polluted by the world. So important. And I did a video recently on how to live in the world, but not of it. And I feel like that's a great way to, you know, if you haven't watched it yet, go ahead and watch it too. If you're wondering how to do the second one. After my Bible study, I'll usually reflect or sometimes I'll journal at the bottom or I'll pray and just ask God to help me in the areas that I need help with especially, but this is how I take notes on an entire chapter of the Bible. Uh, please let me know if this was helpful for you and let me know what else you would like to see. I'll do James too, because it was requested as well, but thank you so much for watching. I post a new Bible study video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I cannot wait to study the Bible with you again.